Ew. We got some dirty water. Well, I was gonna say we were done with sanding, but I just looked over and there's about that many drawers that need to be sanded too. So that's what's next. Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's time to take this outdated furniture and give it a new life. I was doing my due diligence on Facebook Marketplace like I do all day, every day, and I found this set of furniture for $275, plus it was about an hour away. So this morning, Neiman and I loaded up the truck, headed out an hour away, and then came home with this set. I will say it is one of the heaviest sets that we have had in our possession. This one especially has got some weight to it. They don't have any maker's marks that I could find. And when I was doing some Google searching, I never really found something that was exactly like this, but I do know that it's really well made furniture. It's got really great bones, some dovetailing on both the backs and the fronts of the drawers, which is a great sign of high quality furniture. So the only problem with it is that it's outdated. It might be a little ugly in some people's opinions. I personally don't mind it, but we're gonna breathe some new life in it by giving it a makeover. First things first, we are gonna remove all of the hardware and I think it is pretty timeless and classic. So whenever I can, I like to just put the hardware back on after I clean it up. So that's the plan. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in my little bin here so that I don't lose any of the pieces. Most of the time it's really important to put the drawers right back where you found them. So I like to take an extra step and label all of my drawers so that I know exactly where they go back to when I am putting everything back together. That's a lot of drawers and a lot of hardware. All right, our next step is to clean. I'm gonna clean with my furniture prep cleaner from Lily Moon. I just dumped it in here along with some water, so it's just a lot easier to apply. And all I do is spray it and then wipe it back with a wet towel. And this stuff is great because I don't have to go back and rinse because this is a non-rinse cleaner, meaning it doesn't leave behind any type of residue, which is a plus because it's gonna save a lot of time. So now that I've cleaned all the drawer fronts, I'm going to move to the bases of each piece. And not only am I gonna get the outsides, I'm also gonna focus on the insides because it's very dusty in there and I just want these to feel new. And even though people might not pull out the drawers completely, I want them to be new, like they are not dirty anymore on the inside, I will know. So that is something that I like to do on the insides of my furniture as well.
they got some dirty water. I will say a majority of this filth is from the insides where it's super dusty because the lady that sold them to us actually had cleaned them. And so the outsides really weren't too bad, but those insides, man, very necessary to get those cleaned. Next up, I am going to focus on the bases. So like I said, it's time to work on the bases of each piece. So I'm gonna pull up a nightstand here. These things are not light at all. So for this nightstand, I thought, well, for all of the pieces really, I thought of two different things. The first one would be that I could create a base, cut this off completely, and then add legs and things like that. But that is a lot of extra work that doesn't necessarily need to be done. We can work with what we've got. So by working with what we've got, what I mean by that is keeping the existing base, but just tweaking it a little bit to make it that much more modernized and not so outdated. So the first thing that I'm going to do with these bases is sand them down to their raw wood color and see what we're working with. I'm gonna use 120 grit paper on my surf prep sander right here. I'm gonna lay this guy down and we're just gonna see what's underneath that finish. So now that I've got the bases completely sanded, there is this little crevice here that I'm having a hard time getting into with my sander and have it be coarse enough. So I whipped out my little detail sanding kit. Um, I'll link it down below, but it, it comes with like 11 different little grips. And then all you do is wrap a piece of sandpaper around it. And then you're really able to get into that crevice to really just get those details. All right, that's all on that nightstand. Let's move to the next one. All right, actually, before I take this down and switch nightstands, I'm gonna scuff sand while I have this up here. That way I don't have to like take it down, put it back up, all that jazz. So I've got a 220 grit now for the scuff sanding. I just discovered something that I think is gonna make my life a lot easier with sanding. There are several screws on the inside of the base here and I just like unscrewed them because I, I thought since there's two layers, you can just see it, that maybe it would unscrew and potentially take this guy off, which would just be a lot easier to sand. And look, it totally did. So with that being said, I'm gonna take it off and sand it. It'll be a lot easier to get into this little crevice and then we'll just reattach it. I'm kind of all over the place because I'm still in the middle of scuff sanding and I've got one more base to sand. But while I had this off, I really wanted to modernize it. So instead of having this curved edge right here on the inside of the base, I thought that we should go ahead and square it off or I'm gonna make kind of like a diagonal line to um, just modernize it, curvy and just, they, it, the curves are just a little bit dated, this type of curve at least. So I'm going to just measure um, from this inside part right here. And then I am just gonna do like a slanted diagonal line so that we can get rid of this right here. So I'm gonna just try three inches in and see what that kind of looks like. If I draw my line from about the top of that curve to that three inch. So now that I've got it all measured out and marked out, I am going to use my jigsaw to go ahead and make those cuts. And then we'll sand anything down that's maybe like not perfectly straight or anything like that, but it looks really good. 
It looks so much more modern just taking that little curve off. And again, this is saving us time and it's saving us money. If we really wanted to, we could take this base off, cut the bottom off, make a whole new base, add legs, things like that. But if we have a good solid base to begin with, we can just tweak it a little bit and save all of the time and all of the cost. All right, so as I put this base back on, I've still got this piece underneath that I don't want to keep in the shape it's in so that you can still see it. So I'm gonna cut it to the same size and shape as this top portion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trace with my pen and we'll use my jigsaw to cut as well. I still wanna keep this piece on here just for more support, but as long as we've got it like on the sides supporting just like this base is, we should be all good. Not the most perfect cut, but it's gonna be under this. So as long as you can't see it, it should be golden. We need to fix this a little bit. A little trimming to do. I'm just gonna do that with my sander though. Pretty good. Pretty even. Okay. Now I'm gonna scuff sand this guy. Well, I was gonna say we were done with sanding, but I just looked over and there's about that many drawers that need to be sanded too. So that's what's next. So much sanding. Okay guys, I'm about to sand these drawers. Do as I say, not as I do. I have waited basically a year and a half to change out my bag in my surf prep sander, the dust extractor and it's quite full this is i mean there's still room but at the same time like it was just completely all crunched down and so i think it's time to get a new bag what i love about their bags too though is like it's hepa um, so it's it means it's not going to disperse any of the dust except for around the top but then it comes with the lid so the, putting this right into the trash can without having to empty it at all and then i'll just get a replacement bag it's perfect um so that's i mean it's this is heavy this has got to be like at least 10 pounds of ugh, dust so I'm just gonna grab my new one and put it on. I feel like I haven't really talked much about the Surf Prep Dust Extractor lately. I truly love it. I've had it for like about a year and a half. And like I said, I've only changed it out one time. It does a really great job of sucking up that dust. And what I really, one like really key feature that I like about it is that my Surf Prep can plug directly into the vacuum itself like so and then when it's on the automatic setting that means that whenever i stop or start my surf prep if i start it the vacuum will start and it'll just go and then if i stop it it'll go about 10 more seconds but then it will also shut off and the reason it's going to do 10 more seconds is because it has a self-cleaning feature so it just getting all that dust out of the air and out of or and in, like into the bag that is inside there and then if you have it on the manual one that'll just have it on all the time uh, but the automatic setting is really really nice so you don't have to come over and push a button to turn it off, uh, but it's just automatic. So don't forget to change out your uh, bags there. Super easy to do. And we're back in business. All right, we're done with sanding. I hope, crossing my fingers. But let's move on to primer. All right, it's time to prime. 
I am going to be using Dixie Belle's Gray Boss. This is gonna be closely matched to the color that I'm gonna paint all of these. So whenever I can do that, that's just better because you're going to get better coverage with that paint color. Give that a nice shake. Then we're going to strain the primer so that there's no chunks or any foreign objects inside of our paint sprayer, which could possibly clog it up. I am gonna be using the Home Right Super Finish Max for spraying on the primer here. This is a really budget-friendly, beginner-friendly sprayer, um, not too many settings to master, and super easy to use. We do have a deep dive furniture spraying course, which we're super excited to be launching here in the next month or so. There's a link down below in the description that you can sign up and get the first notification when that goes live. We are, we've been really hard working at it and we can't wait to share it with you guys. It'll cover the Home Right Super Finished Max and then a couple other Wagner sprayers as well. But I, I'm just so excited about that finally coming out here very soon. So I've kind of got all of my pieces positioned so that I won't have to do any moving of them when I'm spraying the primer. Also, you'll notice that I did go ahead and put the drawers back in there. I taped the edges just so that if any spray gets in there, um, it won't get on the sides of the drawers. But sometimes if the drawers are inserted into the piece, I like to keep the drawers in there. It just makes for a lot quicker of a spraying job. And then all you do to get the insides of the drawers on the edges is pull it out and do it with a fine paintbrush. about fall we have really nice weather bad thing about fall at least here that's kind of when the bugs come out the biting bugs we got like those pirate bugs they like to bite us and then they like to land on my wet paint but that's okay we got everything primed when it dries I'll worry about the bugs so if that ever happens to you something lands in your paint or whatever you can worry about that once it dries just go back and do a little light coat of sanding that's what we're gonna do is let this dry my favorite part, we finally made it to the painting stage. So I have a little bit of a problem with paint and that is that I like to collect a lot of paint but then still continue buying new colors that come out. So I'm needless, like furniture. yeah, that well, the furniture too. Anyway, needless to say, I have tons and tons of paint colors that I've had over the years. And so I decided this project that I'm going to just take a look at what I've got in there and see what I can do that I have enough of for the entire set. And I found these two colors from Dixie Belle. This one is called Spanish Moss and this one is called Dried Sage. So I really liked both of these. They kind of both have a green undertone, um, but then I also thought, what if we mixed them? So in order to get the true color, I went ahead and swatched out the colors. So we've got Spanish Moss here. 
that's that. And then we've got the dried sage here. And then I mix them together one to one, half and half, 50% dried sage with the Spanish moss. I asked you guys over on Instagram what your favorite was and a lot of you liked all three of them. It was pretty much a wash, but my favorite one was the mixed color, dried sage and Spanish moss. So that is exactly what we are going to do. So since this is a little bit older of paint, it's just really important to get down deep, make sure everything is mixed in really well. I'm gonna start out by just doing 16 ounces of each color here. Um, that way I don't make too much paint, but I can always add more since I know it's that one-to-one -one ratio. Always swatch out your colors too if you're not sure because they look very different in the jar when they're wet versus when they are brushed on and dried. So just grab some old cardboard, even paper, and just take a moment to swatch them out, let them dry, make sure that's the color that you want. With the chalk paint, it's a much thicker paint than the Dixie Belle Silk line or really any other paints that I use here on the channel. So it's important to still strain it through. And then also I will be watering it down just a tad bit so that I've got that that viscosity of the paint that I really want that'll go great through my sprayer. It'll also take just a tad bit longer to strain through, so just be patient, which I'm not when it comes to this. I'm like, hurry up. All right, and then for the water, since we've got 32 ounces of paint in here, um, I'm gonna do just Honestly, not a lot of water. I can always add more later. I can't really take the water out and I don't want it to be too thinned out, um, but about an ounce or two per 16 ounces is kind of what I go for. So I'll just kind of mix that in and see what I think. All right, we're gonna do a test spray before we spray onto the furniture here. We're looking pretty good, let's do it. Coat number one, check. We're gonna let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll do the around the drawers just for the first coat. That chalk paint really got great coverage though. So I think I'll only need a second coat and then we'll do the top coat also, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's let this dry. All right, we're ready for coat two. I'm gonna go ahead and put them all on their backs like this so that I can just make sure and get every single little crevice that it, there's just so many bumps on this thing. Um, so I just wanna make sure I'm getting full coverage.
done. It's time to work on the bases of these guys again. Uh, so now that we've got them all sanded down, I wanted to just do a quick paint wash. That way when I do the top coat, it's not gonna change the color. Um, I really want it to be that natural wood because we're just going for a more lighter, airier feel. So I took my sandbar chalk paint from Dixie Bell, which is one of my go-to paint wash for raw wood. And then I just added about 50% water and I'm going to apply it with the brush here. And then I will just take my microfiber cloth and kind of wipe back that excess, kind of let it soak in for however long you want, which I don't really want it to be too apparent that the paint wash is on there. So I'm just gonna do it pretty quick. And then we've got our wash. So that is the difference. But again, the main point of this is to not change the color of the wood when we do a top coat because I believe this is a red oak um, and so it would turn more of a reddish tone and I don't want that. So we're just kind of neutralizing that color. Okay, all four of them are done. I am gonna reattach them. I'm gonna give them about 10 minutes to dry. They're pretty much dry because it dries very quickly. I'm gonna attach them to each piece and then we'll do a top coat on everything. Top coat is on. All we have left is to fix up the hardware and reassemble. The last step for this project is the hardware. So right now we've got this old kind of goldish, brassish color handle and I really like what they look like except the color. It's kind of too dark of a gold and then plus it's not solid brass, therefore I cannot clean it up with the Barkeeper's Friend, the route that I usually like if we've got brass. So as another option, I am taking some champagne mist Rust-Oleum spray paint and just going to lightly do some coats on this so that we can bring it back to life and still keep it, but it'll still kind of go along with that lighter, brighter, airier feel of the new look of the furniture. Hold. Okay, so that's coat one there. And then once that is dry, we'll kind of flip everything over and do coat two. Hardware is dry. I did a second coat of the champagne bronze or champagne mist color on the others on the top side. And then I also did a top coat with just a clear matte spray paint uh, just to protect it because these are gonna be the highest trafficked areas of these pieces when opening the drawers. Now it's time to go ahead and reattach the hardware everywhere and then Time for the final reveal. Wow, you guys. I just looked at the before photos right before I came out here to install the hardware and I almost forgot how outdated these pieces looked before. But now with their new color and their new life, they look so much more modernized and it really only took a few steps. This has been a project that took me over the course of about four days working here and there. And I definitely underestimated how long this project would take me. I feel like lately I've been doing like a one piece project. It's been a while since I have done a four piece set, but this is kind of what I started out my furniture flipping journey doing. So it was kind of fun to go back and just really dive into a larger project. And I think that this will go perfectly in our storefront. That way we have multiple options of furniture types and styles. But but again, I just wanted to take this set and make it not so outdated. I love a good color mix with the Spanish moss and the dried sage colors 
from Dixie Bell. I'll link all the um, products that I used here down in the description below. So if you're interested in utilizing any of these same colors to get this beautiful yet muted green tone, which I feel like is still pretty neutral um, and it's not like an in your face green. I feel like I've been gravitating toward the green furniture lately. Um, I mean, it makes sense. We have green furniture in our own house as well. Uh, but I just love how this turned out, how just cutting the bases didn't really take any um, extra money to create that more modern look. Speaking of money too, let's talk a little bit about how much this costs. So the cost of the furniture was a bit higher than I typically do, but I knew that the that it could be modernized and that it was really nice, solid furniture. And as I start to up my prices with my the furniture that I am selling, I am able to get a little bit more um, higher end furniture for a little bit of a higher price than maybe I have in the past because there's a larger margin now. So $275 in on this set. And then I would, I would just probably estimate around $75 to $100 in primers, paints, top coats, spray paints. Um, but again, we saved that money on modernizing those bases. I will keep saying that because it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to go out and buy new wood, new bases. Um, you can think about how you can modernize what you have. I'm super pleased with how this turned out. Let me know down below what you guys think of this set and also what you think I should charge for this in the store. I'm super interested in what you guys would pay. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm excited about how this came out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to keep an eye out for our sprayer course. If you're having trouble getting that flawless finish with your paint sprayer, or you just haven't had that, that final push over the ledge to get started with spraying your furniture and you're stuck with that brush, this is gonna be the perfect course for you. So definitely check out that link down below in the description so that you can be the first one to be notified when that course goes live. Thank you guys so much for watching and also grand opening November 4th here in Omaha, Nebraska. Event page is down below as well. RSVP if you plan on coming. We would love to meet all of you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.